just rise from the inside from the inside of me may you delight in the inside in the inside of me set me on fire from the inside from the inside of me come feel my life from the inside from the inside of me all I to be glorified for you to be lifted high all I want is for you for you to be glorified for you to be lifted high let praises rise from the inside from the inside, from the inside of me, may you be Lord, may you be light in the inside, in the inside, come feel my heart, Lord, do it from the inside. 
God shall be glorified in our lives. When God is glorified, you can be sure. Shards of blessing will flow. Praise God. Thank you, choir. Let's bow our heads to pray. Our Father, we give you the praise, we give you the glory. We adore you here this day and we say thank you for the things you are doing in our time. Our prayer is that you manifest yourself to us, accomplish your purpose, and grant unto us grace to live in your will always in the name of Jesus Christ. Magnify your name, O God, and make your praise glorious. Use me as an instrument, as a minister, and bless your people. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' name I pray. And everybody shout, Amen. Amen. This morning I'm speaking on the topic unique things about believers. Unique things about believers. Somebody once said that what you know will influence what you believe. And what you believe will influence your destiny. Which means knowledge is powerful. What you know will influence what you believe. What you believe will influence your destiny. Which means if our destinies will come to fulfillment, there is need for knowledge. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, I read verses 12 and 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verses 12 and 13. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. We have received not the spirit of the world, what we have received as children of God is the spirit of God. And the purpose of God giving us his spirit is that we might know the things he has freely given unto us. Verse 13 says, which things also we speak. Not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual. So this morning we are in the school of the Holy Spirit to teach us the things that rightly belong to us that you may know that you are highly privileged in life. By the grace of God, his will and his purpose shall be done in our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Brethren, we live in a world so delicate and so difficult that the earlier we know these things, the better for us. We need to know who we are in Christ. Who am I in Christ? Number two, we need to build on what we know. Build on it. Number one, know who you are in Christ. Number two, build on what you know. Number three, cherish what you have. Cherish what you have. Number four, move yourself positively, productively in grace. Do not receive grace in vain. Move by the power of the Holy Spirit. Move by the wisdom of the Holy Spirit so that you are positive, you are productive in grace. The number five, live the life that brings fulfillment. Fulfillment. Which means you are a purpose-driven believer. Purpose-driven believer. 
by the grace of God, the things that are given to us, they are made for our good. If you do not know them, there is no way you will enjoy them. And that's why this morning I want to spend some time to point out some few things so that by the grace of God, your faith, my faith will not be built on anything other than Jesus Christ and his righteousness in the name of Jesus Christ. Can I hear a better amen? In 1 John chapter 4, in verse 4, 1 John chapter 4, in verse 4, he said, Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Now, but one thing I want you to know this morning is that the greater one lives in you. God is so great. God is so mighty. But he has brought himself so low and so small so that he can enter into you, enter into me, and live in us. If God dwells in you, he lives in you, then you have nothing to be afraid of. Oh, yes. You have nothing to be worried about because the greater one lives on the inside of you. We have the life of God in us. We live by his grace. And because he lives in us, there is nothing the enemy will do that can prevail. That's why he has given us of his spirit so that he can demonstrate himself in our lives. Take a look at John chapter 4 in verse 26. John 4. Sorry, John 14, 26. 14. Let's start from 23, please. From 23. Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man do what? Love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him. What did he say will happen? And make our abode with him. Which means the father and the son, they make their abode with us. And he has given us of his spirit. We are complete in him. Who is the head of all principalities? That's why the Bible says, greater is he that is in us than he that is where in the world let me draw you quickly to Isaiah chapter 43 verse 1 Isaiah 43 verse 1 but now thus says the Lord that created thee O Jacob you can put your name there he that formed thee O Israel what did he say fear not for I have redeemed thee I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. We are God's property. Thou art mine. Verse 2. When thou passest through the waters. What did he say? I will be with thee. And through the rivers. They shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Everything we have read here at one time or the other manifested. Jesus was going through the lake of Gennesaret, and there was a storm. And the disciples were afraid that death had come. And he only rose up and said, Peace be still. Peace be still. 
Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were thrown into the burning fire, burning furnace of Nebuchadnezzar. That they might be destroyed because they would not bow to the image of Nebuchadnezzar, but trusted in their God. And the God they trusted did not fail them. The fire did not consume them. What shall we say to these things? I want you to know you are not an orphan in life. I say you are not alone. God is going through this life with you. But for whatever comes anytime, any day, you are equal to the task. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is where? In the world. What do we have in the world? You can name them. Troubles. Wahala. Very recently, coronavirus ravaging the whole world. I was listening to news the other day only to discover almost per day in Brazil 4,000 people were dying of coronavirus. For us to be told here in Nigeria that yesterday only 89 people all over the country were infested by corona. 89. The whole country of over 200 million people. Who will say God is not good? Who will say God is not answering prayer? I want to assure you, no matter what happens, the greater one is there. He will not be troubled because of what is happening. No, he always knows what to do. <clears throat> no wonder David said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? For thou art with me. May this be your confession in the name of Jesus Christ. Number two. If you come to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 18. Why we look not at the things which are seen, but are the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal. But the things which are not seen are eternal. We look not at things which are seen. We look not at things which are seen. What am I drawing out here? Brothers and sisters, we are not moved. We are not moved. Our lives are not dictated by the systems of this world. No, we are citizens of heaven. Therefore, the world systems do not dictate our lifestyle. Do not dictate what we do. Do not dictate our dispositions in life. No. There is the greater one on the inside of us. He is in charge. He always knows what to do. Abraham was called of God. And he said to him, I am taking you to a place where you will inherit you and your children and there you will serve me. I will make a great nation out of you. And the Bible says, Abraham left where he was not knowing where he was going. But he had the voice of God. He decided to obey God. And God brought him to the promised land. The Bible says there were situations and occasions that would have made him look back or desire to go back to where he was coming from. He said, no, I want to see where he is taking me to. Brothers and sisters, the systems of this world, the rudiments of this world, the happiness in this world, the challenges of this present time must not dictate your dispositions. Praise God. 
Money in your pocket, no money in your pocket, no problem. I know whom I believe. And I'm persuaded he will keep me. Will he keep you? Number three. We have the ability to turn negative issues or negative conditions around. We have that ability to turn things around. You are a child of God. When I see children of God weeping as though they have no hope, as though they have no helper, he already said, fear not, I am with thee. Fear not, I will help you. Fear not, no situation or circumstance will overflow you. No. Why then should you allow these things to dictate your lifestyle, your disposition, the things you do, how you do them? No. We have the ability to turn negative issues or conditions around. If you read Genesis 26, you discover the story of Isaac. There was famine in the land. And he wanted to run away. And God said to him, no. Remain here and I will bless you. In the days of famine. In the midst of famine. Ravaging everywhere. Now let me ask you. In the days of coronavirus as it is in the world today. Where will you run to? Because it's all over. But at that time, Isaac thought there was hope somewhere. And he wanted to run there. And God said, no, you are going nowhere. Remain here. How do I survive in the midst of famine? Believe him who said remain here. Your father believed him. He was not disappointed. You also can believe him and you will not be disappointed. Brothers and sisters, that's how we build our faith. We look at those that live before us, walk with God. How did they survive? Build our faith on what they build their faith on and we shall see the hand of God. And Isaac remained in the land and he said, God, since you say I should remain here, no rain, everything is dropped. I will go ahead and farm. That's what I know how to do. Because he said, whatsoever you lay your hands upon, what did he say will happen? Shall prosper. So he wouldn't stay idle. He went farming and planting in dry season, in dry land. And everybody is surprised that what he planted began to germinate and to grow. And Isaac had good harvests. And everybody called him the blessed of the Lord. Others may be languishing and lamenting, but his house was overflowing in abundance. Rise up and let me speak into your life. From today, whatever is happening around you that is negative must not rest on you. Your case is different. Your case is different. In the midst of nothing, have abundance. In the name of Jesus Christ. Where others cry, you will laugh. Where others shout for sorrow, you will rejoice. In the name of Jesus Christ. Where others are saying nothing, you'll be showing them abundance. Because your case is different. I say you can, you can turn it around. I do not know what's happening in your family. I do not know what's happening with your business. I do not know what's happening in your community. But I want you to know you can turn it around. Because your case is different. And it shall come to pass in the name of Jesus Christ. Please sit down. You know about David in 1 Samuel 17. What happened? Goliath messed up Israel. Saul, the king, lost hope. Abner, the commander in the army, lost hope. All the gallant soldiers of Israel, they were all looking for where to hide because of one man called Goliath. He threw a challenge 
He said, Israel, we're in battle. But we don't need to fight like that. I am coming out as the champion of the Philistines. You bring out your own champion. Let us fight. If I kill him, we'll be your slaves. If he kills me, we'll be your slaves. Ah! Who will stand the giant? We do not do things according to what we see. If you look at what you see and build your life on what you see, many times, that's why they say a coward dies many times before they are traded. You know why? The things he sees frightens him. But that's not you, that's not me. Our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ and his righteousness. And somehow, Jesse, the founder of David, sent him and said, my boy, take this, take this, take that. Go and check up your brothers who are at the war front, how they are doing, and bring me reports. It was not necessary. Take this cheese, and when you get there, give it to their commander. We are talking of war situation. You are sending a small boy. To do what? Jesse did not know that God was at work moving him to send David. Praise God. Sometimes the situation that frightens you may just be God's opportunity to glorify himself in your life. That's why the Bible says all things work together for them that love God. David came to the battlefront before he could see his brothers Goliath came out. Again he was boasting as usual. And while he was boasting, David saw all the soldiers of Israel running into caves looking for where to hide from Goliath. He was surprised. One man, the whole soldiers of Israel running. Who is this man? And somebody told him he's Goliath, the champion of the Philistines. Ah. Who is the champion of Israel? Israel has no champion. And when his brother saw him asking questions, hey, small boy, you have come here again with your oversabi? The one where you they do for house, now you won't carry, come here. This is war front. You are always too forward. Who sent you here? Daddy sent me. He said, I should bring you this. And he said, this one is for your commander. He said, okay, now go home. Ah, I said, home? I can see there is a reason for me to come here. He said, is there not a cause? There is a reason for me to be here. And what was that reason? This giant must fall. Rise up and let me see you standing. Raise your right hand and your index finger and say, the giant before me must fall. His name may not be Goliath, but he has a name. He frightens you. Every time he comes up, you become too small. Every time he comes up, you forget everything about your life. But raise your hand again and shout it, this giant must fall. That day Goliath fell. Not by weapons of war, but by a sling and a stone. Weapon nobody expected could bring down Goliath brought him down. And when Goliath fell, David had no sword in his hand. He ran, he jumped on Goliath. And he saw the sword by his side and pulled the sword of Goliath. And you will agree with me, the sword of Goliath is not something David will take with one hand. He had to use the two hands to carry it because it's the giant sword. And he chopped off the head of Goliath. The head of your enemy is gone. I said the head of your enemy is gone. The head of your enemy is gone. The head of your enemy is gone. The head of that giant is gone. In the name of Jesus Christ. That was how 
David turned the narrative round in Israel. Yes, a song came out of that by the women. Women are wonderful people. They may not go to war, but they will sing a song. They composed a song instantly. They said, Saul has killed his thousands. But David has killed his tens of thousands. He wasn't known before. That day, his name came out. Tell me, what if he didn't go to the war front? His destiny may never have manifested. I pray for you today. Everything holding your destiny back, give way. In the name of Jesus Christ. Number four. Number four, ability, we have the ability to overcome failures. Failures. One problem we have is that we allow our past to haunt us. No matter what happened in the past, if you realize it, that this is wrong and you went to the cross and you repented and you said to God you are sorry and he gave you the conviction you are forgiven. Brothers and sisters, the Bible says there is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus who no longer walk after the flesh but after the spirit of God. Whatever you hear, whatever they say, matters no more because he has forgiven. We have the ability to overcome failures. In Judges chapter 16, we have the case of Samson. He failed big time. He messed up big time. But when he cried to God for mercy, God showed him mercy. Look at it. Judges chapter 16. I read from verse 18. Judges 16, 18. And when Delilah saw that he had told her all his heart, she sent and called for the lords of the Philistines, saying, Come up this once. For he has showed me all his heart. Then the lords of the Philistines came up unto her and brought money in their hands. Verse 19. There are some people that want to make money with your downfall. They will fail. And she made him sleep upon her knees. And she called for a man. And she caused him to shave off the seven locks of his head and she began to afflict him and his strength went from him here was a woman who a few minutes ago was saying to Samson I love you my honey my sugar the only meat in my soup just like you people do these days you see an old man, you call him baby. You see an old woman, you call her baby. And Delilah was calling something, what? Baby. And she babied him to destruction. Praise God. The secret of the power of God in his life which must never be revealed to anybody. That day, Samson revealed it to Delilah. And she caused the hair on his head to be shaven. His strength left him. He became an ordinary man. Rise up, let me speak again into your life. Anyone who is laboring to bring you down will fall before you. Anyone who is laboring to draw grace out of your life will fall before you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Look at verse 19. And she made him sleep upon her knees. And she called for a man. 
and she caused him to shave off the seven locks of his head and she began to afflict him and his strength went from him that's what the devil wants he brings down a man of God so that he will not be able to do what he was doing before he brings down a brother brings down a sister so that you are no more a challenge to his kingdom that was what they did to Samson look at verse 20 and she said the Philistines be upon thee Samson and he awoke out of his sleep and said I will go out as at other times before and shake himself and wist not and knew not that the Lord was departed from him may God not depart from you verse 21 but the Philistines took him and put out his eyes and brought him down to Gaza and bound him with fetters and of brass and he did grind in the prison house in the prison house something that no body could tame no army could handle fell at the knees of a woman and now he has become a prisoner not just an ordinary prisoner they had to remove his eyes first so that whatever he becomes he may not be useful again and then they made him to grind you know grinding pepper for women to cook soup a whole captain champion of Israel verse 22 how be it the hair of his head began to grow again after he was shaven rise up let me speak into your life the hair of his head was a secret when they shoved him strength left him he returned to God oh God help me again I'm sorry God had mercy and then his hair began to grow with the growing hair was coming growing grace was coming growing strength was coming growing power was coming growing manifestation I pray for you this morning whatever happened before let the mercy of God overrule with the mercy let grace multiply grow 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 let nobody tell you that spiritual growth is not necessary very important the hair of his head began to grow every morning when Samson wakes up and rubs his hand on his head and he saw his head growing I mean growing he knew that something is about to happen 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 something is about to happen, about to happen. and he said grew then the day came, they brought him out to make fun of him. You know, you know they, will, they will bring him out. They say, Samson, who is before you? He is by your right. Pursue him. Whereas the person is by the left. Something will be going to the right. So they were making, oh, no, it's not that go to the left. They were making fun of him. But this day, Samson said to the boy that brought him to the theater, said, please take me to the pillar that holds this building and then he cried out he said God if you have forgiven me and you have renewed me let this building collapse on the Philistines and God brought it to pass I want to assure you if you will allow yourself to forget the past and you give yourself to continue to grow in the grace of God you will do great things we shall turn every failure to success in the name of Jesus Christ. Sit down, please. Number five. We have the grace of inner understanding that surmounts all challenges. You remember that 
woman, a noble woman. All she was saying is, it is well. It is well. Did it become well with her? It became well. Please, in now understanding, in now understanding, that's what Bible says. The Spirit of God bears witness with our spirit. Some others may be telling you, oh, no, this is not nice. No, 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 no. Please, this is how I want to go about it. This is what I want to do. Because you have an inner understanding. That is where many of us are failing. There is no inner understanding. Everybody just talk to you, do that, then you just follow. Go right, you go right, go left, you go right, move forward, move forward, go back, you go back. You have nothing coming from the inside of you, planted by the Holy Spirit, telling you this is the way. Go therein. So, inner understanding that surmounts all challenges. When the husband asked her, where will you go and see the prophet at this time? It is well. Just send me a donkey and a young man to ride it for me. She made a journey. The man of God saw her afar off. Sent Gehazi. Go and ask this, this woman. That must be the Shunammite. Ask her, how is it with your husband? How is it with your business? How is it with the child? And everything she was saying was, it is well. It is well. She had an inner understanding. Though this boy be dead, he will rise. God did not give him to me to make me sorrowful. And the child rose. I pray for you this morning. Whatever the devil stole must come back. You will laugh last. I didn't hear your amen. amen. Number six. We are more than conquerors. We are what? We are more than conquerors. Paul said, in Romans 8, 37, we say, no, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. We are more. Because the greater one lives on the inside of us. The greater one lives on the inside of us. In 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. 1 John 5, 4. We are more than conquerors. What did he say? For whatsoever is born of God. What did he say? Overcome the world. And this is the victory that overcome the world. Even our faith. Whatsoever is born of God. Any idea that is of God. Anyone who is born of God will overcome the world. You are an overcomer. Tap your chest, tell yourself, I'm an overcomer. Anytime the devil wants you to cry, to weep, tell yourself, no, I am who? I'm not hearing you well. Anytime the world around you turns against you, tell yourself what? I'm not hearing you well. Anytime the devil makes your home hotter than you expected, what should you say to yourself? I'm an overcomer. When the season business is not flowing, comes around, tell yourself what? When there is a delay in your life, and you have prayed and God assured you, he has settled it, but you are yet to see it, what do you tell yourself? I'm an overcomer. We do not go by what we see. The just shall live high again. By faith, we are overcomers. I say we are overcomers. In Psalm 16, I read verse 5. Psalm 16, in verse 5. The Lord is the portion of my inheritance. And of my cup, thou maintainest my lot. The Lord is the portion 
of my inheritance. I want to ask you, if God is your inheritance, can you lack anything? If God is your cup, can you lack anything? He said, thou maintainest my Lord. He takes care of everything about me. That's what I want you to understand this morning. God takes care of everything about you. He gave Joseph a dream. But his brothers rose up to fight that dream. God did not stop them. He allowed them to fight the dream of Joseph. In the process of their fighting, they drove Joseph to where his dream would be fulfilled. He didn't have to pay any fare of how to travel from Palestine to Egypt. He didn't need to worry about how do I survive the desert. His brothers in their jealousy settled that for him. Praise God. Every step of the way God was there until God brought his destiny to fulfillment. You will get there. I said you will arrive. The Lord is the portion of my inheritance and my cup thou maintainest my Lord. Verse 6. The lines are falling unto me in pleasant places. Yea, I have a goodly heritage. Is anything better than that? He said, the lines, my portions are falling to me. Where? God brings the best in pleasant places. I have a goodly heritage. How can God be involved? And things will not go well with you. Whatever you are seeing today, if it's not going with your dream, it's fake. And a songwriter wrote, he said, it's always darkest before the dawn. That if it is still dark by 6 a.m. does not mean the sun will not rise. It's darkest before the dawn. All the fake things the enemy is bringing around. No, don't be troubled by them. The lines are falling unto me in pleasant places. Yea, I have a goodly heritage. In the days of famine, the Philistines will dig wells. They will not find water. But Isaac and his men, they will dig well, they will find water. And when they find water, the Philistines will be jealous. They will come and cover the well with sand and pursue Isaac away. They will move, go to another place, dig a well, and they will find water. They will pursue them again. Everywhere they got to, they were digging wells and finding water until they get to Rehoboth. The place of God for him was Rehoboth. Overflow. But he wouldn't get there until he moves. And God allows circumstances that will move him to get to his Rehoboth. This morning I pray for you. That it will not be long anymore, you will land in your Rehoboth. Whatever is happening around you, let them propel you to your Rehoboth in the name of Jesus Christ. The lines are falling unto me in pleasant places. Yea, I have a goodly heritage. Where you are is the best. Let nobody convince you or confuse you that where you are is not the best. Where you are is the best. Why is it the best? Not because of what people are saying you're seeing. No, because you are carrying the greater one on the inside of you. And everything will go well. And he says the lines are falling unto you in pleasant places. You have a goodly heritage. In verse 8, finally, 
verse 8 I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand what did he say I shall not be moved rise up on your feet that's all we have to do this morning set the Lord always before you and you will not be moved you will not be troubled in the name of Jesus Christ pass me not O gentle Savior hear my humble cry while on others thou art calling Savior do not pass me by Savior 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 hear my humble cry why on others thou art calling Savior do not pass me by Savior prayer this morning. Oh God I set you always before me. Take me to my destiny fulfillment in the name of Jesus Christ. Prayer. On the way do not walk by sight. On the way turn everything around. On the way, turn the failures into stepping stones to greater heights. Growing grace, his hair began to grow. His hair began to grow. Grow and grow and grow. Let the Spirit of God move you. We are more than conquerors. We are more than conquerors. Whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. You are built to overcome, brother. 